Patterson, I, I I completely agree with you in the fact that he opened his door to England essentially just because he wanted a title, like he just wanted to be called Count, which is that's just yeah, that just it's I just mean. dumb. That is my point. That is why I rank it last. That is why it's number six on my list because there's just so many things that it could have done better that were simple even. Like, it would have been so simple to just not have Bond interact with Blofeld until much later in the film and then him have that rec- moment of recognition like, oh, sh- you're Bond. Like, instead of him stupidly having this whole undercover thing, why have that continuity error? That, like, honestly, that would have made sense if he, because he thinks that this guy, that this hilly guy is just going to show up so maybe because he's a badass, he's like, oh, I don't need to meet with this guy face to face. I'm too busy. You know, maybe Bond thinks I cannot meet with him face to face because we literally just had a face to face for the first time. And so Bond avoids him. Blofeld's too busy or whatever. But then eventually they or have prefers to, meet, to work he's like, in the shadows. I actually recognize you. I mean, and Bond didn't even Bond put on some glasses. He, he thought he could take the Superman approach and just wear some glasses and a hat and that Blofeld wouldn't recognize him. Were the producers just like, was it literally the Michael Bay? Like, uh, fuck it. We're never going to justify why they don't recognize each other or why Blofeld suddenly doesn't have a scar did peter hunt just say i don't give a sh-. they make such a point to show that this is indeed a sequel but then they don't justify you only live twice which makes me think that they just wanted to disregard that movie entirely here's my thing about the movie that i, I like things i will acknowledge that suck about this movie or i wish were better right we've already established and a lot of people point this out this is one of the biggest things is that bond and blofeld don't recognize each other right and i'm gonna bring out some trivia and say that they had thought that they were like, well, maybe we can explain it that Bond got plastic surgery, right? Like they could have said that, but I think that would have made the movie sillier if they had done that. So they just said, F- it, we're just going to go. It, it was like a F- it situation. They're like, we're not going to do I that. I can accept that. Patterson, I recognize the thing that you said in the beginning about the movie where, you know, he acknowledges the camera and breaks the fourth wall. At the time, it probably good. worked for audiences, but now it just seems a very strange thing. I kind of imagine that, like, breaking the fourth wall was, like, a thing back then that, like, isn't as cliche as it is now. I can't imagine that, like, 50 years of cinema hasn't just, like, beaten that into a completely and- mulched dead horse but to touch on what patterson's saying of like of the time too, him falling for tracy but then having sex with other women this is like right after the summer of love right so it's just like that's just how it was i said this before tracy even points out i don't know if he's in love with me or not but mccurdy that's our point he's our point is that he doesn't love her there may be a connection between that man blofeld and the lawyer with offices in Bern, Switzerland. Now, Mr. Bond, you'd have no further interest in me. Another mistake. Our whole point yeah, is that it's this doesn't. fake love. I think Nance's he- point is the best made of the night, which is that like this just happened during the summer of love, and like that would have been a thing in the si- 1969. They explain would the been- clothing too. Yeah, <laughs> they're ridiculously no, totally, yeah. totally yeah. see through white shirts. <laughs> but that, but that doesn't, that in this doesn't movie back up why he falls in love with her or why they have a romantic montage when Bond already got the information he needed. To go find Blofeld. He should have been like, hey, thanks, peace. Why is he so drawn to Tracy? Why? We, we, we established this. This is yeah. that Why? she, she is broken. He is broken. So what? And they, they see eye How to eye on that. How many damaged bro? I mean, Here's the thing, Honey again, Rider was raped. The beginning of the film. And Bond banged her and then immediately got rid of her. Why does he care about Tracy? Like I said in the beginning, the theme of this movie is his struggle between his job and his own personal life, which could equal Tracy, right? Sure. But Tracy, you can make that analogy with Tracy. Tracy is trying to deal with her own life. She wants to break away from her father's shadow. She doesn't want to be the daughter of this, basically the head of this mafia uh, criminal syndicate in Europe. She doesn't want to be that. She's kind of constantly followed by these men who are protecting her from, you know, other men and all this stuff. And she does all these reckless things, but she is tired of the fact that her father is interfering with all of her life. But there's not that much similarity there because that's a role she's inheriting, whereas Bond chooses to be an agent. Bond has a choice and she feels like she doesn't. Like, Bond can walk away from being a secret agent anytime he wants. In fact, he literally tries to do that in this movie is walk away from his fucking job. That, to me, again, is the tragedy of this movie is he See, that, does But that. I'm saying, like, they, that's, that wouldn't be a relatable point between those two. They wouldn't get, like, that wouldn't be something where they, they bond over because they have a different experience with it. If Bond was 
an indentured servant and had to serve as a secret agent if he had, was obligated to do so out of some sort of bond. Like maybe his father was a secret agent and he feels like he has to carry on the family lineage. That would be something he and Tracy could bond over. But Bond literally has a part in this film where he's like, I'm, I'm down to walk away from this right now. Like this is bullshit. I don't want to do it anymore. Tracy's life experience is not like that. That's not something they would relate to each other over or bond over because they don't have that same experience. Like she feels like she's obligated. Charlie threw down the gauntlet early on in the, in this whole show, right? He had even said that what matters to him is good story. And that's what this movie has in spades is a good story. I know there are weird plot things that you guys think are weird. I don't necessarily think as weird as they are. And in contention to that, that's why I don't think it is necessarily higher than Goldfinger or From Russia With Love. But I definitely do think it is better than You Only Live Twice, Thunderball, and Dr. No because of its strong points. McCurdy needs to rank. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Please do. I, okay, it's difficult for me because all of Connery's movies, they're heavy on the plot side. Yeah, by nature of just being male fantasy action adventure movies, they're more about plot, less about story. And I feel like the best movies usually combine the two where they have plot, where actions and things happen and you're invested and you're like, Okay, what's going to happen next? Story is a combination of plot and characters rather than just, here's the stuff that happened. Darling, you're in trouble. What is it? There's people after me. Can I help? Have you got a car? It's, here's the stuff that happened alongside, here's how that changed the characters. Tracy, an Asian shouldn't be concerned with anything but himself. I understand. We just have to go on the way we are. Huh. We'll have to find something else to do. You have a Bond who is just a superhero and he can do anything and, you know, he gets the babe and all that. Or you have a Bond who is more of a human and maybe he changes. I said that early on. I said, does Bond ever change? The guy yeah. never changes. He's just the same guy. There is a very real change here. The whole movie is about Bond changing. And it's almost as if Peter Hunt, who edited Every movie up until this point got fed up with, oh, there's so much more you could be doing with this character. Take his super spy, superhero status away from him to the point where he's just a man and let's play with that. I think he did a decent job with it. I just don't fully believe the change and that's the problem. So I think I'm more prone to agree with Patterson because like I said at the outset, What's your cup of tea? Is your cup of tea the flawed man or to have the ice in his veins, badass mother? <laughs> I like to live in both places. Same old disclaimer as always. I like all these movies. There's a diverse array when it comes to these bonds, but I think my cup of tea is generally going to be that ice in his veins, badass mother. <laughs> the bond that this movie creates because bond after this is ice in his veins, never never fall in love again <laughs> yeah badass motherfucker who survives because of that ice in his veins and will never be emotionally compromised again because at the end of this movie he realizes he really only just has the one life yeah of, he doesn't of, have of, of service to her majesty okay so so that being said because that's my that's my quandary is that is that the right word yeah yeah that's, right word. that's sure. the right word that's my quandary you're, you're george bush at I, this point you make up george your own Bush's words on my my quandary is that you, you, uh, you even say n nuclear like George Bush nuclear <clears throat> instead of nuclear 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 my quandary here is that I think from rush with love and Goldfinger are also great films but I can't I can't put myself to say this movie is worse than Thunderball or you only live twice or Dr. No. Like, I can make arguments. I, I could see it going. What's your rank, though? Tell us. I could say. Know your rank. So my list would be Goldfinger on top still, From Russia with Love, Honor Majesty's Secret Service, Dr. No, Thunderball, Then You Only Live Twice. So if I may make my short rebuttal, I am definitely the guy who prefers Ice and His Veins Bond, 100%. You're like, Charlie, if you're in both places and McCurdy's on, like, showing the flawed character I'm not in bond. both places. I can visit, but I like to live with ice in his veins, badass yeah, I'm, mother... I'm, I've always... I've never even visited the other side. That's what I'm and saying. if you're is, a Bond purist, that's where you are. Yeah. You're, you're the ice in his veins. I survive because I'm not emotionally available. That's what um, keeps him alive. Yeah. So, 
to to speak to McCurdy's points, I've never even considered watching a Bond film for its emotional content before. It's really cool, like that you take that perspective from it because I've never even considered doing that before. And I think if you're gonna look at it from that perspective, which is one I hadn't considered, I can see why you would not rank this last. And I still disagree with you, and I still rank it last. But I can see why you wouldn't rank it last. This is my last point I'm gonna make, and this is in regards to how I view the film. And how I approach ranking the quality or assessing the quality of any particular artistic endeavor, whether it be an actual art piece or cooking or filmmaking or video game design. The question that I always ask myself when I'm trying to assess something's quality in terms of its artistic merit is, could they have done any better? And that's why I rank this film poorly is because I all the things I listed were things that I felt they could have corrected and failed to do so. That is why I assess it so low is because I think there were obvious and simple mistakes. Like that's why I consider like I, I love star Wars. I love star Wars more than I love Lord of the Rings (gasps) subjectively, subjectively, but objectively I'm like Lord of the Rings are better films because they don't make any mistakes. They make zero mistakes, which is why they're better films. Um, And that's why I rank this so low is because they made a lot of mistakes that they didn't have to make. And again, I I completely disagree. And for one, I will also say that this movie, they wanted to go back to following the novel. Because again, like I said, the last episode, they were like, oh, we don't give a about no books. Yeah, so <laughs> they care book, about how it, the movie it, comes across. If you don't like yeah. certain aspects, it could be because that was taken out straight from the book. But that's like, why things... when you're adapting it, you fix that shit. The whole thing about me saying this movie is last is because we're sitting here right now talking about all the stuff this film could have done differently to make it better. That is my point. That is why I rank it last. 